most people in America don't even realize what wildland firefighters are. How dangerous it is. How many of them don't come home. Straight to the latest on those devastating wildfires out west. How dangerous is wildland firefighting? Lace up your boots, get your hard hat on, throw your pack on, and run into the woods while it's burning. There was always so much music in our house. Luke was a guitar playing fool. Ready to go, Soph? My son, Luke Sheehy. Luke was a smoke jumper. Fires unreachable by truck, so they have to parachute into the fire. And he was good at it. Luke was the kind of guy who, he just always made me feel like I, I, I had somebody that would, no matter what, would drop everything to, to be there for me. We ended up hiring Luke. He was one of the best firemen I've ever had work for me. Did anything, anytime, anywhere for anybody. And anything for a fun moment. Luke, <laughs> June 10th, 2013. Got a knock on the door. A burning branch had fallen, landed on Luke and killed him. When someone you love dearly dies, your world just cracks open. But two days later, Bert Miner of Wildland Firefighter Foundation arrived at the smoke jumping base. Doug was a very broken father when I met him. Uh, that was a very busy season. Uh, I believe we had 42 line of duty fatalities that year. Prior to Luke's death, I had no idea what the Wildland Firefighter Foundation was. My mom, Vicki Miner, had a vision back in 1994. I used to do contract commissary for the Forest Service. The first fire I ever went into, I knew that there were people in there that would die to protect my life. I just knew it. And so, 1994, we started this foundation in my kitchen. Wildland Firefighter Foundation is a nationally known nonprofit. Our main mission is to reach in and sustain the home of a fallen or injured wildland firefighter. When that firefighter goes down, the rent doesn't stop, groceries don't stop, none of that stops. The guys are risking life and limb out there. The least we could do is take care of them when they're taking care of the country the way they do. They never say, hey, what do you need? They would just show up with coffee in the morning or grab a load of laundry. That's exactly WFF. This foundation is important to us because we know we're changing people's lives. Because of Coors Banquet, we've been able to subsidize those firefighters who sacrifice so much to protect our West. They have supported this foundation for five years, and they brought some spark back to some of those families that's buried these firefighters. This I got at the foundation. It says, I may look harmless, but I raised a wildland firefighter. One of the hardest things about losing my son, you have all his clothes. And so I, we had boxes of t-shirts and you, you know, it's hard to just take him to goodwill. I mentioned it to Vicki and that's all you have to do with Vicki is mention something. Firefighters out in the wildland community collect t-shirts from each fire they're on. Lynn, Luke's mother, had all these shirts, and 
said, you send us those shirts, we'll make a blanket. This is such a wonderful thing from WFF. And of course, this has been our mantra. A friend of Luke's came up with this shortly after he died. Live like Luke. And this, this is a great picture of Luke, too. I was talking to Doug one time, and he told me he was playing his guitar. And he could feel Luke right here behind him. One gift that I, I've gotten from Luke is that, you know, sorrow is just as valuable as joy. Whatever, whatever, feel it as deep as you can. Uh, live in the moment fully. Those stories help me understand that what we think of as the end is just a new beginning somewhere else. here at the Luke Sheehy Memorial Park. I was amazed at the uh, purpose and commitment he found uh, in wildland firefighting. You know, your time was cut short, but the time that he lived, you ought to be awfully proud. <laughs> 